What is up fellow developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in the last video we created a hey we used basically we used HTML5 canvas to draw elements on the screen. In this video you're gonna see what exactly what's going on in this screen. We're gonna be animating the some circles bouncing around the ring um, at different speeds, different sizes, completely random. I've also had a little bonus feature. When you click, you spawn a random uh, blue ball. Uh, with the same with the same randomness as these balls, they'll be randomly generated to um, KO, and you can support as many of these as you like, shooting in millions of directions. So, without further ado, let's create a new pen and let's um, crack on. So, first things first, we want to write out a canvas with the class of sandbox. You can give the I oh sorry, not the class, the ID. You can give the ID whatever you want. We're then going to say margin zero padding zero box sizing border box i'm then going to say the uh, canvas uh, background color can be red that's not red but sure no we we'll actually have it 3c 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 um, which should be a gray there we go and then we're going to also get the body uh, tag and just quickly say width 100 VW, height 100 vertical height, but um, overflow hidden. Just so we, because um, we're going to make this full width, we don't want it to completely change. Anyway, I've just noticed that's really small, so let's stretch this out and zoom in a little. Um, that should make it easier to read just for the people who can't read that very well. There we go. Same with the HTML. So, first thing we want to do, we want to get a reference to our current canvas, like we did in the previous video. Again, if you haven't already watched that video, I suggest going back and checking it out because um, we go through pretty much the very, very basics of um, canvas. We're going to now say can't or oh, not can't. We're going to say canvas dot width, and we're going to set it equal to the window's inner width. We can copy this, paste, and sell it equal to the inner height. So now this should stretch to be the whole width and height of the page. We can now get the CTX, which is the context, and we can sell it equal to the canvas dot get context of 2D, because we want to be rendering a 2D. Again, same like we did in the previous video. Um, so, oh, sorry, I just punched my microphone. I hope I remember to edit that out, but I probably won't. Um, so, what we need to do is actually, um, we need to create an object, uh, but we're going to be using sort of the method approach. We're going to create a circle object um, or function called circle, and we're going to pass through an X, a Y, an R, and a C parameter. Now the X stands for the X coordinate, the Y stands for the Y coordinate, the R stands for the radius of the arc which we're going to be drawing, and the C stands for the color of it. Now, without um, explaining too much, all this basically says is we're going to be we're, this is going to be our way we create new circles. Um, so we're going to say this dot X is equal to the X. This dot y is equal to y, this dot r is equal to r, and this dot c is equal to c. Now, we also basically, because we're going to be moving these items, we want to get a um, a velocity. So we're going to say this dot dx, we're not going to sell it equal to anything, and, and this dot dy. So both, so dx stands for the um, horizontal velocity and dy stands for the vertical velocity. Um, the reason we're not setting these yet is because we're not gonna we're not gonna show those just yet. We now want to create a this dot draw function, which um, will take no parameters, but it will start off by saying ctx dot begin path. So again, this is what we did in the first video, but this time we're going to be drawing an arc. So we're going to say fill style is equal to this dot c for this dot color 
um, and we're going to say ctx dot arc, which will allow us to draw an arc. So we're going to give it the x coordinate, the y coordinate, the radius of the circle. We want to start this off at the zero um, degree, and we want it to um, arc all the way around by pi times two, which is basically three hundred degrees. And we're going to say ctx dot fill which is actually going to draw the arc. Right now, you can't actually see anything happening. But if we went down here and we said um, new, no, we'll say let ball equal new circle, and then we said ball dot draw, nothing will happen because we need to give it an x and a y. So we say 200, 200. We give it a radius of 40, and the color will just say is red. As you can see, it's draw a black square, but when we swap it around, oh, that needs to be in quotes. And there we go, we've now got a red square, a red square, a red circle, sorry. Um, we can change the properties to these. So let's say we want it bigger. We can make it 80, uh, which gives it a diameter of 160. Um, we could set its position. So let's say the um, we want it to be 400 pixels along the X axis, and now move it across. So we don't want just one, we want multiple. So we actually want to say let balls or constables, because it doesn't need to be a um, changeable value. Um, we can say constables, which is an empty array, and then we can say for, we could create a for loop where we'll loop through and we will create a bunch of balls. So we're going to create 20, that's hence the i is less than 20. I plus plus. So in here we just want to say let R, which is going to be the radius. The reason we're doing the radius first is we need the radius property to do the X and Y position. So we're going to say the radius is going to be a random number, whole number, so that's why we're doing math.floor, um, math.random, and then we want to times this by the number we want, the maximum number we want, which is going to be 30. Then we're going to plus the minimum, minimum, which is going to be 15. So we're saying we want we want a number between 30 and 15. We then want to get the x, and this is a little bit more difficult. So we're just going to say math dot random times. Oh, so we get a random number between zero and one, and we want to times it by the canvas dot width because we want it to be able to to spawn anywhere between here and here. Um, but we also want to say minus the radius of the circle times two. So we want to minus the diameter plus the radius. Now, the reason we're doing this like this, because basically if you math.random times canvas.width will give us the ball's position from here over to here. But there's a chance half the, the circle can spawn in this wall or in this wall and if it does that that means it'll get stuck in the wall and it won't know what to do so we can now do and that's where the radius comes in space we push it the radius out over here but we also don't let it grow too much over this side either so now we can say the y is equal to the exact same but we need to change width for height because we want a random height we're then going to say let C, which is going to be our color, be equal to red. Finally, we want to say balls dot push new circle. We're going to give it the uh, uh, the x position, the y position, the r position, and the c position or the c element. And this is going to give this is going to randomly generate us a bunch of new balls. So we can console dot log these over here, hit save, open up the console, and you'll see we get a bunch of randomly generated objects um, with a function in which allows you to draw. Now to actually draw these, we need to say, we need to create a loop basically, we want to create a function called update, which is just going to say for let i is equal to zero and i is less than balls dot length i b 
plus plus. The reason we want to do it less from the so this basically set we're looping through now the a balls array, and we're gonna say balls i dot draw, and then we want to say function. No, we want to call the update function. So this is only gonna call it once, and as you can see, they've been drawn there. But we don't want it to be called once, we want it to be called multiple times because we want it to be like um, an animation which is called multiple frames per second. So we're going to say um, request animation frame and we're going to pass through the function we want to turn into basically a, a thing. So as you can see nothing's going to change because the x and the y coordinates of these are not changing but they are being updated. So. If we now go back into our circle object, we could say this dot up note this dot animate is equal to a function. And in this function, oh in this function, we're just gonna say this dot x is plus equal to this dot dx. Now and we're also gonna do the same for y. So we're going to plus equal to this dot y is plus equal to dy. So remember I said these are going to be our velocity. So now we can set these values. The um, values for these are going to be, again, enough of random numbers. So we're going to say math.floor, math.random. To be fair, actually, if you want it even more random, we don't need floor. We could just say math.random times 4 plus one, uh, probably actually, probably better to put that in parentheses. So this will say a random number between zero and four plus one. And we can do the exact same for the, the dy. Um, and now we can get random numbers between these. Now down here we will say this dot draw. So now we're going to actually increment the position of our elements. So if we come down to the update and we change draw to animate, we hit save, you'll see our balls are drawing in a random direction. If we re uh, actually, I'm going to quickly change the behavior here and we're going to turn auto update off so we can hit run again, which is going to randomly spawn the balls going in a random direction. So there is one issue with this. Have you noticed they've all they're all heading towards the bottom right of the page, and they're also creating lines. They're not staying as circles. The reason for this is because they're drawing the ball over and over again in one direction. We're not clearing the canvas. So to clear the canvas, we want to say ctx dot clear rec. Oh, not react. I do that every time, <laughs> and we want to clear the rectangle from zero. Uh, from the top right all the way down to the canvases right, um, the canvases width and the canvases height. So now, once we save and hit run again, we should just see the balls go off in their direction, but they're all heading straight down to the bottom right every single time. The reason being is because our math.random only allows for one direction. Now, to fix this, we can say this dot dx is equal to math dot floor math dot random times two, so a random number between two, and when we want to check if it's equal to one. So we're going to do a ternary operator here, and we're going to say if it's equal to one, we want to oh we want to times dx by one, else minus one. So this is going to allow us to basically create a random number between one. Um, minus these num minus four or four and one and minus one and that's exactly what this does. So all this says is if this equals to one, this gives a random chance. This can this is a one in or oh, fifty. This fifty percent chance to get a one um, for this to be true. So there's fifty percent chance there's going to be a positive or a negative number which will allow it to go in opposite directions. So if we save and then we run, you'll see the balls. Now they're all going to the top right. But I mean, if we refresh, they won't always go in the same direction. I hope. I beg. <laughs> Wait, that one's kind of not, but it is. 
did I do something wrong? To, oh, so I did it again. I missed out the um, parentheses after the random because it is a function. So now when we run this, there you go. So now they're going in completely random directions from each other. And there you go. So one issue though is they are going straight through the wall. Now to fix this in the animate function, we need to basically say if this dot x plus the radius, so we're going to say plus the ball's radius, this dot r is greater than the canvas dot width or this dot x minus this dot r is less than zero. We want to flip the, um, we want to say this dot x is equal to minus this dot x, or no, sorry, dx, which is obviously our direction, uh, or our velocity, and that will allow us to bounce off each wall. But we also need to do it for y, so if we copy and paste this and change the values out for a y value, and the canvas dot width for a height, canvas dot height, if we now save and run again, you'll see the balls are now bouncing off the edges of the thing. And that is the functionality we wanted all along. So now it's they're finally all bouncing all over the place. But as I said, there will be a bonus feature, which I'm going to show you now. Under here, we're going to say canvas.add event listener. God, that was harder to write than I thought. Uh, click function e because we need the e and now what we want to say is when we click on the canvas we want to draw a new ball so what i'm going to say is let r equal math dot floor math dot random times 30 plus 15. now the reason I'm not going to do X or Y because what I want to say is balls dot push. I want to create a new circle, but I want to say E dot client X, which is actually your mouse's X position. And we will say E dot client Y. Then we want to give it the R, which we've just created. And then we want to give it a color of blue. So it's different. And it's going to push on a new circle into our canvas, which will then render out straight away. So let's rerun the page once it's rerun. We can now click and you can see there is now a random circle which shoots out in random directions um, each time, which allows us to create a bunch of crazy little effects. And now it's a bit more interactive. Um, so, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you did enjoy the video, then leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more, then hit that subscribe button. If you want to be the first person on the scene, then don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know as soon as the video goes live. And if you have any feedback, comments or anything, drop it in the comment section below. It is all helpful. Any sort of engagement with the videos helps me out a lot because it gives me an understanding of what you guys like and what you guys don't like. So thank you all for watching this video um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act. Head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track.